tell you a little bit about my brother, although so many of you know him on so many different levels. And for the R, I put down rare. You know anybody else like Radley? <laughs> there is no other. And um, when I was asked to do the eulogy, I felt so honored. And then I thought, what do I say? So I did what Rodney would do, is look it up in the dictionary. <laughs> <laughs> and it means high praise. Aloha family and friends. I'm deeply touched to see so many people here today that knew Rod. His passing hasn't been easy for me. I always looked upon our family, the five aunts, sisters, and brothers, like the fingers on one's hand. My brother was the adventurer all of us dreamed to be. A person who cared deeply for the Aina and the beauty of Kalalau Valley. The O I thought of open and talking with so many of you today. Um, you helped me to see how open he was. Look at you! You guys are all so different. <laughs> You're all from different walks of life. And yes, he was all your friends, you know. I My children grew up with Uncle Rodney singing and playing guitar, and eventually they sang and played right along with him. And it makes me smile when I remember hearing him sing, saying the chord changes to the Eagle song. Take it cheesy. <laughs> <laughs> we all have fond memories of him sitting around a campfire or in our home singing the songs he wrote as well as the songs he loved. Ever since he was young, did you see how many gun pictures he had? <laughs> and his archery, and I, it was so funny because as I was doing these pictures, I looked through thousands of them and I, uh, this theme seemed to come out. And all the things he played with when he was little all came out to something when he was an adult. But Rambo he was, and yeah, good at it. Too. He sang his call out song so much, we can all sing the words. As one of my friends stated, Rodney was such an intriguing person because he truly lived life on his own terms. He found his passion and inspiration within Kalalau, and his happiness shone through for everyone around him to experience. There are few people you meet once and never forget, and Rodney was one of these people. He was a man of quotes, and he recorded them everywhere. Every place you looked, you'd find his writings. He lived by these quotes. Some of my favorites are, so blessed just being, we know how, Kalalau. <laughs> and my favorite is, don't eat until you're full, eat until you're tired. <laughs> At many of his campsites, he had, he, he had a handwritten sign that said, living my dream, loving my life of elegant simplicity, mahalo kea For D, I chose divine. <laughs> Divine because one of his favorite sayings, I don't know if he quoted it to you, we are not human beings having a spiritual experience. Some of you are laughing because you heard it. Um, we are spiritual beings having a human experience. And um, for Rodney knew that well. Eight years ago, Rodney decided to make Kalalau his home. Shortly thereafter, I found that curiosity had gotten the best of me. And hearing Rodney say, Everyone should go into Kalalau Valley at least once before they die. That convinced me that I was getting old and I'd better do it now or never. I stayed for one week because I wanted to discover Kalalau too. I had to see why Rodney would give up creature comforts like electricity and hot showers and grocery stores to live in such a remote locale. After one week, I could understand why Rodney had chosen Kalalau as his home. It was peaceful, serene, tranquil, and friendly. Rodney loved the challenge of learning how to hunt, make bread, tie tarps, and learn basic survival skills. Kalalau was a, was a healing place and a sanctuary for his broken marriage. It allowed him the freedom to do anything he wanted to do. And like Shoshana said, I use the same words. It was mystical, magical, lots of fun and challenging. 
In his solitude, his guitar was his constant companion, and he would compose songs and sing them at all the jam sessions. He was especially proud of his song about Kalalau, and my personal favorite is See You in China. You will be able to hear them both later on in this program. And everything that he went through in his life, he used it for the good. And uh, I really am appreciative. You know, he wore a smile. And if you look at the pictures, as he got older and older, his smile got broader and broader <laughs> and more and more peaceful until he was like, I go down sage. And he had so much light. You don't buy that kind of a smile. You earn that kind of a smile. Because when you go through life's experiences, you do what is the next letter in his word. Oh, no, not yet. Can you tell us what, what you do in Kalalau? I do anything I want to do. It's all about the freedom. Free it up. So you're there illegally? Technically, yes. Um, there is no schedule. No more brush your teeth when. Eat dinner now. Money um, put on clothes. Clothes are optional. In fact, uh, <laughs> <laughs> for the piano. <laughs> a lot of people think, and this is very really small thinking, that just because people, especially young girls, are walking around naked, that that they want to have a lot of sex. But that is really small thinking, and it's not about the sex; it's about the freedom. And what you know, what? just sing the song. <laughs> of my classmate. How many of you have ever been in and on Kalalau? Okay, how many of you have only seen him from the lookout, gone by on one boat, and never been in Kalalau yet? You're getting old, so you better go and do it. It's worth it. Nobody, no, I cannot explain I have a bunch of pictures. I can talk to you till my head comes off. And I can never explain to you what it's like to be in this sacred, magnificent place that God made. That we are so fortunate to have on Kalalau. Kalalau is my church. Kalalau is my temple. I don't, I don't see myself living in this jungle of ever. I live in elegant simplicity. You gotta forgive my boom. My boom is not as a, it's not as booming as before. So anyway, I wrote this song and it really says it all about what Colorado is and it's all about. Okay, I'm quite proud of this and I look forward all year to share this song with you. Okay?
God, thank you so much for just the opportunity to have known and loved uh, my brother Rodney. Uh, there are just so many stories that are out there, and you know, for somebody that focused on others and focused on friendships and focused on relationships, uh, yeah, thank you for his life and thank you for all of the people that are here today to be able to share a story, to be able to uh, sh sh share a tear and. Uh, also the happy times, you know, uh, you know, he was just a person that loved people, loved you, and loved your creation. So, um, yeah, be with us as we go through this celebration of his life, uh, as we uh, commemorate and, and memorialize and remember all that he was uh, while he was here, and he still is, uh, uh, just in a greater kingdom. Um, yeah, in Jesus' name. Amen. Again, amen. Rodney called me Yanaj. <laughs> because he always had this fun way, like, he, he spelled his name backwards, Yandor, and I became Yanaj. And I was friends with him for so many years. When I, find, I finally recognized him when I was teaching school in Kalaheo, and he was my substitute teacher in my classroom. And, he was always very professional. He came by and how had things been. And we realized we knew each other from Kalalau. And you know, our, finally it was just meant we were meant to be together. And um, we've been very discreet, so you better be discreet because <laughs> we have been. And even my husband, when I told him after we'd had a platonic relationship for many years, that. I found Rodney, he said, good choice. You know, when I went in and found Rodney in his sleeping bag on February 14th, I was just trying to get real with it. <laughs> and I'm so grateful to the Ahn family because that would have been so hard for me if they had really realized <laughs> that Rodney and I really found we'd always been looking for and you know for all of you young people and all of you married people <laughs> get real you know it's like <laughs> that's what it's all about and, and so I am just eternally grateful and eternally grateful thank you Jamie welcome to the family forever <laughs> I don't know if that's a good thing. <laughs> I'm the middle finger. <laughs> and my Kalalau name is Nalon Nuskop Naha. I guess a lot of people don't know that the first time Rodney went into Kalalau, and you know, I, I like to qualify Kalalau by saying, tried to go into Kalalau. Um, he was about fifth grade and I was eighth grade. And my dad, who was well into his 60s, uh, uh, got this great idea that says, we're gonna hike into Kalalau because it's there. Um, so, um, into Hanakoa, my dad's uh, legs gave out, and he couldn't go any further. So we took all of this stuff that we carried in uh, and put it on Rodney. <laughs> and my dad 
jumped on me. <laughs> so it's part of being the middle finger. <laughs> um, but we walked our way back out, and you know we made it out to Hanakapiai by the evening. Uh, you know, one step at a time and one rock at a time, and try not to fall and kill ourselves. And that was one of the great adventures. But uh, I, I didn't know that uh, it was going to have such a great impact on him that uh, he was going to make that his home. You know, when he went in, then I used to think that he was running away from something to go into there. But as time went on, as he shared his love of the place, his just great um, uh, appreciation for being in, in, in God's hands, and being able to live, you know, in elegant simplicity, that um, I really began to realize that he was not running away, but he was running towards being in there. And you know, uh, uh, we just watched his spirit grow uh, larger and larger, and we heard the stories grow exponentially about. You don't know me, but I know Rodney, and here's my story. Uh, and each one of them was unique and very interesting, and uh, uh, you know he had a, a great effect. Uh, and so, you know, finally, I think that his spirit got larger than his body, so he had to be able to, you know, just set it free. And that's certainly one of the things that he did now. Um, I, I don't know. Somebody said that he was an outlaw. Uh, any DLNR people? Here? <laughs> hey, he loved you guys too, man. You know. <laughs> it, it was really funny. Uh, you know, like uh, uh, I I heard one time that you know he he got actually busted, red-handed face to face, walking the trail, and oops, run into DLNR, and he's like, oh, I gotta bust you. And he, he goes, oh, okay. And he just turned around and disappeared in the bush. And they went, ah, yeah, what? <laughs> and, and, and they went, he was here. <laughs> And then he wasn't here. So it's kind of like now he was here and he's kind of not here. But, you know, that's because of a choice. You know, that's it. You know, this is my hometown and, you know, you don't have any power over me. Uh, and, and I guess the latest article that came out was that he, uh, you know, that he was fined uh, by DLNR <laughs> several times for being in the valley illegally. And I just had to laugh at that because, you know, for somebody that gave up all notion of money and, you know, things like that, that says, okay, you're doing this illegally and we're going to fine you. And he's going, okay, thanks, give me the paper. <laughs> and then turn around and disappear. And it's like, awesome. I, I, I have yet... I, I, I look forward to see if they come chase us to see, hey, he has this outstanding one. <laughs> I don't think I can disappear as well, but... Uh, yeah, you know, he lived his life so well. Uh, he lived it so fully. And uh, I don't know what possessed me at the time that, you know, he became a celebrity, but, you know, it's like... Uh, 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 somehow it came along with a quotable quote that says, you know, he didn't have a lot of li uh, years of life, but he had a lot of life in those years. And it's certainly true. We missed him. You know, but Rodney, turn around, go, disappear in the brush. It's all good. So thank you all for being here. And thank you for being a part of it. The best flute player oh, that you ever heard. Yeah, cause we are the people. Yes, the beautiful people. Creative people. We're learning how to laugh. We're